the, I told you I would build the um, molecules that are on your lab paper. In these molecule kits that we have, you'll see all different kinds of colors and sticks for bonds. The ones that we were sticking with were carbon is always represented with black because the black balls have four holes drilled into them for four bonds. The oxygens are red. They have two of the holes drilled into them because they make two bonds. And then the hydrogens are white. They only have one hole drilled into them because they can only make one bond. And then the two different bonds, we have longer sticks for the bigger atoms because their bonds are longer. And then we have shorter ones for shorter bonds. They go with mostly just the hydrogens because that's a small atom. So the bond length is smaller. So in your packet, it's telling you to construct a water molecule is one of them. So water is H2O. So you're going to take red to represent the oxygen. And we're going to take two of the hydrogens, which are represented by whites. We're going to put those together. And since it's hydrogen bonds, we're going to use the smaller ones. And so that's a water molecule. And a water molecule has what we call a bent structure, because what's actually happening here is there's actually unshared pairs of electrons on the oxygen here and towards the back. And since electrons all repel each other, they push each other apart. So these hydrogen bonds are actually pushed up towards the top because these unshared pairs are repelling them and pushing them upward. So a water molecule actually kind of looks like a Mickey Mouse. Okay, But when you're all done, there should be no more holes anywhere because there's no more bonds that you can form. Okay. The next one that they, or another one that they asked you to construct was methane, which is CH4. So carbon, carbon can always form four bonds total. So we're going to take a carbon and we're going to attach four hydrogens to it. And again, we're going to use these order steps here. When we start building it, you can kind of see that same shape that water had. But now instead of having unshared pairs of electrons like the, the oxygen had, we're going to have all shared pairs. So when carbon forms four single bonds, it actually forms what we call a tetrahedral shape. So you can kind of see that it has a triangle on each side. The three hydrogens make like a triangular shape on all four sides. And that's called a tetrahedron. So these bond angles, the reason we like to build these three dimensionally, you can see that it's actually more than 90 degrees because when they spread out, they have enough space. And they're actually 109.5 degree angles. But when we draw them on paper, since it's flat and two-dimensional, it looks like they should be 90-degree angles, but they're not, because they can spread out further three-dimensionally. And then the last one on the front page that they're asking you to build was methane. And methane is made up of two carbons put together, and then the carbons are surrounded by hydrogens. Put the two carbons together, we're going to use a longer bond. Okay. But when we attach the hydrogens, we're going to use those shorter bonds. And basically, what this is just going to look like is you're going to keep that tetrahedral shape, it's like two tetrahedrons hooked together.
So that's ethane. Methane is just one carbon, ethane is two carbons. If we added another carbon to here, you'd have propane. I'm sure you've heard of propane, like in propane gas grills, things like that. So all you'd do is you would just take one of these hydrogens off, attach another carbon, and surround that by hydrogens. But you can kind of see we have two tetrahedral shapes and they're hooked together, right? So those are the first three that they asked you to build in that packet that I gave you. And then if you read the background up at the top of that packet, it says that organic molecules always contain carbon. They actually contain hydrocarbons, which means it's hydrogens attached to carbon, hydrogens and carbons attached together. So out of these three, the only one that's not organic is the water molecule. The other two are organic because they're hydrocarbons. The next thing you want to look at is the glucose molecule. And that's a little bit more complicated. It's a ring structure, has six total carbons. There's five carbons in the ring, and then oxygen closes the ring. And then you have another carbon sticking up. And then every other carbon in the ring has an oxygen attached to a hydrogen, and then also a hydrogen group attached to a carbon. So I'm going to put you on pause here. I'm going to build that, and then I will come back. So I started to make the glucose molecule here, but I wanted to kind of point out how we're doing this. So we have this ring structure that has five carbons. And then the five carbons, it's, we're closing the ring with the oxygen. And then what I'm going to do, the sixth carbon is just going to come off up here at the top. And then off of that carbon is going to be what we call an OH group. It's an oxygen attached to a hydrogen. And then for the other two bonds, we're just going to attach hydrogens. Ring. And then this is the only place that another carbon is going to come off of with our OH group and our two hydrogens. And then we also need this carbon only has three of its four bonds. So we're going to need another hydrogen in there. And then on each of these other carbons, it's going to be similar to this. We're just going to put another OH group. And then They'll only need one hydrogen because they're already attached to two other carbons. So again, I'm going to put you on pause and I'll attach all those so you don't have to watch me draw that in. So here, then you can see the glucose molecule. And this is the simplest sugar. So this is when you eat carbohydrates. Your body basically breaks down all of your your carbohydrates into these, these glucose molecules. And then that's what they measure if you get a blood sugar taken. They're measuring how much of this glucose is in your blood in a concentration, okay? And if your body regulates it correctly, then you're good to go. But sometimes we have too much blood or sugar in our blood and sometimes it's too low and then we have to regulate that. And then the glucose is what gives us the energy that we need um, to make new cells and those types of things. So our body needs to be able to break down this glucose. And what we learned in class is in order to break this down, just like you burn, whenever you burn something, you need oxygen. Well, we breathe in oxygen and that's what allows us to burn these carbohydrates. So even though we're not burning it like a fire, we still need oxygen like a fire does. Okay. But we actually need six of these oxygen molecules for every one of these. So oxygen is just two oxygens hooked together, but they actually form a double bond because oxygen needs to make two bonds. 
So it starts off, the two oxygens come together, but then they each still need one more bond. So we use another stick and we just make a double bond. So this is what you breathe is an oxygen. It's just two oxygens hooked together with a double bond. And what happens when you have six of these, the six oxygens and the glucose combine together and start reacting and all of these old bonds break. And what you'll see in here is you have a bunch of carbons, oxygens, and hydrogens that all break apart. And what they end up forming then, these are your reactants because that's what's reacting together. And then when they go together, the six oxygens kind of swarm in and attack the glucose and they fight and they break each other's bonds. They come back together and what they breathe out is carbon dioxide and we breathe out water as well. Now we already built water before, okay, but we didn't build the carbon dioxide. So let me just show you what carbon dioxide looks like. Again, we said carbon needs to make four bonds, right? my four sticks on here. And we're going to attach two oxygens to that. Okay. I attach another oxygen and then you'll see that there's still two bonds that we need to form right that haven't been attached so just like the oxygen molecule needed a double bond when we make carbon dioxide we actually need two double bonds and that's what a carbon dioxide looks like then we got the carbon with the two double bonded oxygens. So what happens, I think one of the questions on your packet is, it's asking how many of these molecules are formed? Well, we need the glucose and six oxygens for our reactants. Okay, so when that all reacts, what happens then is six of these carbon dioxides are formed and six of these water molecules are formed for every one glucose that breaks down. So one glucose is the six carbon dioxides and six waters, okay? One, six oxygens, attack it. So these are our reactants with six of these, and then we get six. All right, and that is pretty much as far as what we built for the activity that you have. If you have any other questions um, from the questions on the packet or the conclusions, just let me know.